Hello, everyone. Welcome and good day. Thank you for joining us for our event, Maximizing Value in Load Runner Through Scalability and Flexibility. This is sponsored by Microfocus as well as Vivid, uh, specifically our Great Lakes and Eastern local user groups. Next slide. We have a packed agenda for you today with two exciting speakers. Uh, Julio Arteaga is an ADM solution architect with Microfocus, uh, and he has over 30 years of experience in application testing and delivery space. So we're very excited to have him here from New York City, and he's gonna share with you all about LoadRunner today. We also have a guest speaker from uh, another Vivid member, uh, Mike Willett with Olenic Associates. And Mike works for Olenic and he and specializes in performance testing. So he's actually used the LoadRunner product since version 6.5. So that's over 15 years. So he's gonna share his wealth of knowledge and we're very excited to have him here today. Go ahead to the next slide. And what we want you to do today um, is just a reminder, this is a session that will be recorded, so you can use it as reference in the future. Uh, the slide deck, the Q&A, all of that will be posted on the Vivid website once we get it all in place. And then you'll get an email that has a handy link directly to all of those assets. So uh, don't fret about not being able to access that information. We also definitely want to, you know, answer your questions, have some engagement and interaction with these expert speakers. So please take, you know, the time to ask some questions. You'll basically type the questions in the questions pane. And if you go to the next slide, I'll kind of walk you through what that looks like on your screen. Um, so this is a picture of the GoToWebinar control panel. It should be somewhat similar to what you may see depending on your if you're using the app or a web browser version. Um, but it's probably located in the upper hand right corner of your screen. So to submit a question, just open up that questions pane, expand it, and then type your question and then don't forget to hit send. So we'll have that handy. Uh, and next slide, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna turn it over now to Julio will be our first speaker. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, glad to be here. Thank you all for, for coming. And, um, you know, I wanted to give you a quick uh, introduction about myself, a little bit about my background. And, and I started with, with, um, with Mercury Interactive many years ago uh, in the testing space. So it wasn't, that was my introduction in, into, into the testing space itself, um, you know, pretty early in the process. And, you know, I've seen the tools go from, from very basic platforms, you know, addressing the needs of a of the business community from uh, from simple applications all the way through to where they are today uh, at MicroFocus. So I've seen the evolution uh, of testing. So specifically today's conversation, I really wanted to talk about performance engineering, but from a uh, from scalability and a flexibility perspective. And I'm going to keep on repeating those terms because I think that's uh, very important today. And we're going to talk about the the Load Runner platform in general, some of the different uh, editions of Load Runner, and then ultimately we're going to end up doing a small demo to show you um, some of the value points that we're going to be driving at. So when we talk about performance, right? Performance is really the foundation of success. Um, when I started in this industry, again, it was simple applications. It was maybe a web application or a two-tier application. Today, there's a lot more complexity, and there's a lot of uh, a lot to lose today if performance is not taken as as part of the uh, of the success criteria for any application during delivery. Um, you know, all of us are consumers of mobile applications. So if a mobile application doesn't work, it's not simply a matter of just an inconvenience to the customer, but it, it is also something that drives or, or impacts negatively the brand reputation for the organization. So performance really has taken a front seat uh, in order to deliver a reliable uh, application, something that you can you can certainly um, place your reputation on and deliver something viable to your customers. So performance testing, unfortunately, is also the last mile, right? Um, you know, applications that aren't properly performance tested um, can certainly suffer in the long run. Uh, even if an application is working properly, we, we've seen 
this many, many times, the application is working properly, it goes out the door, it's delivered to your customer base, um, and then we kind of tend to forget about it, right? So performance becomes a, a, a typical last mile single um, application, and then you know we only hear about it when there's a defect in production, which obviously we don't want to get to. So, you know, poor application design, higher costs of change if, if, a, if a defect makes it into production. Obviously, that's going to drive up the costs. It's going to cause delays in the next release, and you're really going to be spending a lot of money, a lot of effort in the wrong places, right? Instead of innovation, you're really just remediating problems and taking care of issues that that should not have happened in the first place. So. Why does this happen? Why does, why does performance suffer when it comes to application delivery? Well, a couple of things, right? Uh, sometimes there's a wide gap between development and the QA organization. Now, you know, when I started in Mercury Interactive many, many moons ago, um, it was a very simple process. There was a QA team, there was a performance team, they ran a series of tests, and then they collected results. And then they would, they would look at the back end, right? So you would call everybody at two o'clock in the morning and try to figure out why your database server is an issue or why the application server is an issue. But even before that, right, you had to uh, first find where the problem was. What team do you call? So it really became an exercise. It was very resource intensive and it was very uh, uh, potentially expensive, right? So that kind of, you know, puts people off towards, you know, let, let's, let's worry about this later or let's let's not even deal with the right groups right developers do not become part of the equation in fact we're going to talk about developers today and how they fit into this process but initially they weren't even part of the process there's a greater variety of technology right so all of us here in this call we deal with technology very different technologies on a daily basis these are legacy systems these are virtualized virtualized systems uh, mo mobility is a huge part of this equation, right? So mobile applications are, are have taken off well, beyond our wildest expectations. These are all things that now we have more things to test, typically less time, less resources, uh, and you can see where the challenges lie, right? And then there's the complexity. It is getting more difficult to find where the root cause is for, for, uh, for an issue. So to give you an example, right, my favorite example is you have an application that might be virtualized or it's in a Docker container. So now you run your performance test. Well, first you need to find the resources, right? You need to run this, this uh, application under test. You need to stand up the infrastructure, but then you need to stand up the infrastructure for your uh, performance platform. And then you need to run this test and then hopefully find something and hopefully find, you know, in the right location and call the right teams and do the right remediation and so on and so forth. So the complexity kind of puts us off and performance testing becomes a very, oversimplified process, right? You know, we, we test what we think we need to test just enough to get it out the door, um, especially in an agile project or, 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 you know, an organization that's thinking in an agile fashion. They want to deliver at two weeks or four weeks, right? Something viable to the business. You don't want to be that person that holds up the process. So you, you tend to push things out the door um, and kind of get over the hump of complexity. So that, that also drives uh, that process. And of course, there's the growing cost, right? You know, performance testing can be, certainly it's an expensive endeavor. If you have uh, multiple applications, you might have legacy applications combined with modern applications. These are going to cost resources, skills, people time, right? So this is the, these are things that are just going to add to the, to the headache of having to, to um, uh, test this. So how do we get over these challenges, right? Well, this is the big picture. This slide represents the big picture of how we need to take load testing from a simple load testing perspective and really drive it forward so, so that it becomes ultimately a true performance engineering platform. In other words, something that's deliverable across different parts of the organization, addresses the different needs of the organization, stress testing, right? Understanding the behavior of the application under various loads, various users, pinpointing and identifying root cause of performance issues. Now, as I said earlier, right? Many times we deliver applications, things look good, they look okay, I always like to say there is always room for improvement, right? So if, if, if an application or a transaction takes several seconds and you're okay with that and you stop there, you're setting yourself up for failure down the line, right? Because you want to be able to fine tune. You want to get ahead of the competition. You want to be able to deliver something that your customers will be impressed with. And as I said, we're all consumers of mobile applications and other, you know, uh, platforms as well. And how many times don't we see the reviews online that say, well, this application is slow this stinks, I don't like it, I'm going to move over to a competitor. So you see where there's a lot of loss, a lot of, a, a lot of potential for loss, not only in cost, but also brand reputation as well. 
And then virtualization is a big part of this, right? You know, we, we, we have limited time to deliver an application, but we also have limited resources. So ideally, we'd like to take performance testing and be able to model different network conditions and apply those conditions so we can play the what if scenarios. What if the network has this latency? What if the network has a certain drop rate, right? So we wanna play these what if scenarios without having to uh, install additional platforms and go through a massive configuration exercise. So ultimately drive this as a true performance engineering application or platform or center of excellence, something that's consumable by various parts of the organization. What does it, what does it all mean? It means that we need to apply flexibility and scalability. Those are the two key terms. Flexibility, because we wanna be able to address different parts of the organization. That means developers as well as the performance engineers. Developers need to be involved because they need to define or they need to work with and test from the application level. Which part of the application is causing an issue, right? You know, what, what is coming across the wire that's causing a problem? And I'm gonna show you that in a, in a great report that's gonna really make things stand out like a sore thumb, right? But then you also have the performance engineers. They're tasked with creating a scenario, creating a test, running a test, making sure that the platform behaves properly and you have the right resources in order to run your performance test. So that's what we're gonna keep on uh, harping on and talking about is scalability and flexibility. So this is where microfocus performance engineering really takes a leap, right? Because we're able to take um, our applications under test and regardless of the underlying technology, we can work across various layers of technology. Uh, Load Runner, the platform we're, we're going to be talking about, has been around for many years. It's, uh, started life, I believe, in 1999 in Mercury Interactive. So it, it really has um, really been developed right, with, with the industry in mind. We take feedback from our customers and we bring it back to our R&D organization and we really take those things into consideration so we can build a better uh, platform that addresses the needs of the organization. But microfocus performance engineering really broadens the integration across the, the, the uh, ecosystem of performance within the organization. So it's not just a, a platform that exists in a vacuum, um, it certainly integrates and plays well with other parts of the organization, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But ultimately, we're talking about three things that you see here on the right, right? And the details is on the left, right? It's broken out. That is greater scale, greater scalability. That means doing more with less, right? Classic example. We've heard that some, you know, over the years. I want to do more with less. I want it to cost less, but I also want to use a platform that's expandable, that meets my needs, whether it's running a single scenario with one application, one transaction, or running a hundred thousand or a million transactions and really putting this exercise uh, to the test. More coverage. I want to be able to cover greater parts of the application, right? How do we do that? Well, we eliminate uh, complexity. How do we eliminate complexity? We provide the flexibility, right? Developers want to work with their own tools. And when we talk about developers, again, that's going to be one of our focal points. How do we you know, get the developers on board to create a scenario, right? So we want to give them that flexibility to use their tools, their IDEs, their languages, right? So that's where they're going to, their space that they're going to work with. But now the QA engineers, traditional engineers, are going to do a record playback of a script. They don't understand languages in detail. It's not part of their skill set. However, they are tasked with testing the application. So ultimately, we're making everybody happy, right? And, and removing some of that complexity from the equation, we're gonna provide more coverage. People are gonna be, have more incentive in order to, to design better testing, performance testing specifically. Ultimately, better outcomes, right? So you, you're, you're gonna be testing earlier. Your developers are part of this equation. They're gonna start testing earlier. They, they're gonna have um, their, their own ecosystem in order to test and they can be shifting. So we're shifting left, basically, is what we're doing. We're shifting the, uh, the performance testing to the left earlier and providing better outcomes. So let's talk about the load runner. Now we, the load runner platform, right? And some of the shared benefits. And we, we'll start drilling down into, into more details. But this is what the load runner ecosystem looks like today. Now we've gone through a bit of a rebranding last year. We've made everything load runner, right? So now we have different flavors of load runner. There's load runner professional that's been around for for quite some time, as I said, back in 1999, 2000, started with Mercury Interactive. Um, Load Runner Enterprise, 
was uh, known as Performance Center. And Loadrunner Enterprise really gives you that global footprint of Loadrunner. Loadrunner Cloud, that is one of our latest offerings, right? It's been around for a couple of years, but that's one of our latest ones that was known as Storm Runner Load. Loadrunner Cloud really represents an evolution in performance testing because, as you can imagine, everything is in the cloud. And then we're going to talk about Loadrunner Developer, which is our newest protocol slash development environment for our performance testers. And I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised when you see the value that that provides. Ultimately, shared benefits right across the board. Enterprise coverage, as I said, we, we talked about some of these points already, but I think they're worth repeating. Enterprise coverage, right? So we utilize the broadest and deepest technology and protocol support. Mainframe, need to test the mainframe, not a problem. Web application, of course, that's been available for, for, for a very long time. Uh, your ERP systems, right? SAP, your Oracle, um, your APIs, all those things can be tested, right? They're supported by the platform. So we have one of the, if not the largest, uh, level of support for different application types, right? That includes Internet of Things, um, um, LDAP, email systems, and so on and so forth. So really, you know, there's not a lot of limitations on what you can potentially test with this. It's also an open and integrated platform. So we have open APIs. We want to be part of the larger ecosystem. We understand there's other solutions, other tools out there. So we want to be part of this. We don't want to just lock ourselves into a proprietary platform that is not accessible, right? So certainly CICD, that's part of the, of the ecosystem. Uh, monitoring tools, right? So bringing uh, metrics from your production environments back into your, your performance platform, right? So you can fine tune your testing, make sure that you're really testing the right things at the right times. Scalability and flexibility, my two favorite words, and really the focus of this. And that is, well, huge conversation, but this is really, you know, the focus of this scalability from one to a million virtual users, right? Being able to test, but also more importantly, is providing flexibility, not only in the platform, but also consumption model. So, you know, we can consume the platform by, by the number of virtual users, right? That's the number of users that are, that are opening sessions and logging in and performing transactions. Um, but we also have flexibility, um, you know, to provide a consumable that is that basically you pay for what you consume, right? So if you have to test a million virtual users, but you only need it for a week, that is certainly something that we can provide, right? So you're not paying for things that are just going to sit on the shelf and not going to, not going to be used, right? And of course, infrastructure is a, a huge part of this scalability and flexibility. Things like using load generators that are Docker images or virtual machines to be able to provision these things um, in the cloud or on-premise. So Flexibility and scalability are the two biggest terms that are part of this. And ultimately, realistic, right? We have a very realistic platform. In, in fact, um, we're one of the only platforms that provides that ability to virtualize the network and apply network conditions or real world conditions, right? If you want to run your test as if it's coming from a 3G network or a 4G network, you don't need to purchase a subscription to a, to a, uh, to a, um, a mobile provider you can do this through network virtualization. In other words, you're running the test as if it is co coming across that, um, that, that um, network, right? Here's a sampling. We're gonna, we're gonna actually have a slide that has a little bit more detail about this, but this is a sampling of the coverage of the types of technologies that we cover. So you can see here, it's very, very comprehensive, right? From, from uh, GUI level testing, right? So that's your, your true client, true client, mobile, web, native, these are scripts that your performance engineers would record, capture, and play back um, as a virtual user using a browser, right? So it's a very point and click, drag and drop exercise, right? Now that's, you know, I always like to say that's all, all the way on the right-hand side of the equation. On the left-hand side, your developers can develop using JavaScript, Java, um, C Sharp, VB, and so on. They can create virtual users um, using those, those assets, right? Because obviously developers live in a, in a bit of a different um, space as well. Extensive integration is part of this as well, so that we can integrate with your CICD Jenkins deliverable platform, right? So we can make this part of a true CICD delivery system. So just to give you some example of the power of this integration, it really goes beyond just simply running a test from, from Jenkins. Um, it also includes things like standing up the, the environment, right? The assets needed. So for example, we have a customer that will have a Jenkins job that will create a container. From a, from a Docker image. 
and that becomes the load generator. So they stand that up, they stand up the Docker containers with the application under test, they run the performance test, and they tear down the environment, right? So the environment is not just sitting there waiting for things to happen. So you're paying for what you consume. You're not, you're not, uh, you don't have something sitting out there just taking up CPU space and server space and so on. So that's the power of that integration. But other integration includes things like open source test automation. As I said, we understand there's a lot of infrastructure out there. There's a lot of solutions out there. Some customers are using JMeter, Gatling, JUnit, right? We take those things into consideration. So you can run a JMeter script as part of your performance test. You can run a JUnit test as part of your performance test. Selenium, that's very common, right? Customers have a lot of Selenium out there. Um, Selenium is great because it gives you the ability to do your your unit testing, a little bit of functional testing, and you can use that for your performance testing as well. So the point here being that Load Runner integrates and is something that fits as part of your as part of your process. And so flexibility for maximum scalability at lower cost. So we alluded to some of these items, right? Share and reuse. You can take your your load generator and make it virtual, make it a container, right? It only exists as far as, as your test runs. Optimize license options, right? So we have licensing per virtual user, or you can you can also um, purchase virtual user hours, right? So you can say, oh, well, I'm gonna run these for six hours for a thousand virtual users. And now you're 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 strictly being <clears throat> excuse me, being charged for those six thousand virtual users. Burst capacity, what happens for those special cases where you just don't have the resources? Right? You don't have the on-premise resources. Not a problem. We're fully compatible with AWS Azure and Google Cloud. So not only does that include your load generators, but also on-premise things like uh, controllers and your data processors can also exist on the cloud. And really, you're deploying your way. That means that you're doing things the way that your business does things. Right? We don't force a particular model on you. So we don't tell you, okay, on-premise only and cloud only. No, you can do a combination of both across multiple platforms. And as I said, realistic emulation. And I do have a report. This is going to be part of my demo. I'm going to show you this report. I'm going to drill down to this report. And I think, I think you'll appreciate the value of this. Right? And then, of course, some of, the, some of the graphs. So I'm going to skip ahead and start drilling down into some of these solutions. Right? I'm going to go through, through a couple of slides on each one. Nothing too extensive, right? because we've spoken quite a bit of, of what they commonly share. But Load Runner Professional is the first thing we're going to talk about. Load Runner Professional is your on-prem performance testing solution. It's been around for many years. Any, anybody who's been in the performance testing space from 2000 forward, they're familiar with Load Runner. It is a, a um, on-premise solution that is at a site or a location. It includes a, a load generator, uh, controllers, one or more controllers, one or more load generators, and your tests will run based on a particular protocol and application under test. Now, there is flexibility with, with this type of scenario, right? So you can create your test virtual user and you virtual user will run against the application, collect metrics. You have one or more monitors that are monitoring the application behind the scenes. That includes your SQL server and your web servers. Um, and you can also monitor your resources, right? So I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly because I wanna make sure that I cover um, as much as possible, but you can create very flexible scenarios. That means you can run a test that includes a thousand virtual users, or you can run a test until a particular condition is met, such as a CPU condition of a certain percentage or a certain throughput is met. That is a goal-oriented scenario. So now you're adding that capability of saying, where's the breaking point for the application? Or I simply want to just run until something happens and I want to see what, where the ceiling is for the application. Analysis is a big part of this, right? So we have the, the capabilities of generating all these great graphs and reports. Now, one of the reports I'm going to show you as part of the demo is going to be really something that is striking and its ability to deliver a message simply, straightforward, without any complexity that you might have seen in the past. And these are the most recent Load Runner professional protocols and technologies that we support. Now you can see here, right? This is a very, this is an extensive slide, right? It has a lot of different technologies mentioned in here. But I think the one thing I want to point out here is that we are currently on Load Runner 2020 Service Pack 3, 2021 um, actually just came out. So it, it, it literally a few days ago, but 2020 Service Pack 3 includes a lot of cool stuff as well, right? So you can see there's integrations with uh, with Team City and 
you know, a single load generator for, uh, using a Docker container. We support Citrix. Um, uh, we support Azure DevOps and so on and so forth. So, so quite a bit of technology that is available here. Now let's take it to the next flavor of Load Runner, and that is Load Runner Enterprise. You might have heard of this as Performance Center. Load Runner Enterprise takes your performance testing and makes it a true global presence. What does that mean? That means that your testers can be anywhere around the world, right? They're accessing the platform via web interface. So your testers can be in California, India, Australia, Brazil, it doesn't matter, right? They're able to share and manage that platform. Your virtual users, right, can be pulled into projects. So it is a true project-based distribution system. So you deliver quickly because now you have a managed platform. Administrators can set aside and manage the different resources, the, the uh, virtual users, the load generators, the controllers, what becomes part of a project, what is limited, what is scheduled, what is what needs to go down into maintenance, and so on, all from a single, unit, single user um, interface. Right, And you're driving better quality across the enterprise because now this is visible. Visibility is a big part of this. This is visible from one central point of management, but also the results and the, the different assets that are going to be managed is all from one single uh, platform. Whereas Load Runner Professional right, has it all based on a single location or a campus or a building, right? Um, you know, it, it, it's not exactly globally accessible. This is globally accessible. Um, for different projects, different applications. But here's the cool thing. The scripts and the protocols and the technology for building these things is the same whether you're using Load Runner Professional or Load Runner Enterprise. Um, and Load Runner Cloud, which we're going to talk about uh, shortly. But again, we're supporting globally distributed teams and reduce the complexity and infra infrastructure cost. How do we do this? Well, a couple of things. One is being that it's a global platform, we're able to see the resource usage and manage that resource usage, right? So, you know, when, when we have this level of visibility, we can see where we, we we're falling short, where we need additional uh, assets or resources, right? There might be teams that are not able to test efficiently because they don't have enough hardware or software, they don't have enough licenses. You're able to see these things and manage these things from one central location. Right. So a single administrator can typically manage a very large platform. Also, it's a very scalable platform because you can take all these generators and controllers and underlying hardware and you can you can uh, duplicate them, I guess you could say, and you can make this into a really true uh, scalable platform. So project based approach. Right. That's one of the, the benefits as well as as we just mentioned. Right. So that's visibility into the project. It's a little dark. I apologize. but uh, basically shows you the project usage, the users, what protocols they're using, what resources they're consuming. So then you can make sound decisions on how you're going to distribute all these different resources and make sure that they're in the right place, right? You know, going back a couple of slides when we started this presentation, um, I mentioned that, you know, one of the things that really puts people off from, from performance testing is the complexity. Right? All these things, all these things you need to manage. It's, but, you know, it's difficult enough, you need to worry about the application on the test, but then you also need to take care of your platform. Well, this makes it a lot easier because it gives you that visibility and that ability to move things around. And ultimately also look at end-to-end -end performance from one central location. So that means that you can get trend reports, you can get uh, different monitoring reports, you can incorporate uh, production data, right? So if you have data from a monitoring solution, let's say SiteScope, um, you know, monitoring and production. You can bring that data back into your platform so that you can do comparisons and make sure that you, in fact, are testing the right things at the right time and you can make those adjustments. Be proactive, right? I guess that's, that's the, the best term for this. Instead of reactive, waiting for a problem to occur and then, you know, hoping to then, you know, get it, catch it in the next cycle, you really want to be proactive. You don't, you want to fine tune this application, even if it's performing uh, well and you haven't received any complaints. This slide's kind of a repeat, but it you know, stresses the point that whatever is available in Load Runner Enterprise is also available in Load Runner Professional. Now, let's talk about Load Runner Cloud, and then we'll go into a, a, a very quick demo. Load Runner Cloud is really the, 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 uh, one of the latest products or platforms that we offer today, was known as Load, uh, Load, uh, Storm Runner Load. Um, and it really delivers a cloud-based performance testing solution. 
So what is the big deal about Load Runner Cloud? Well, the big deal is that it takes a lot of the complexity out of the equation, right? So it becomes a consumable platform. Obviously, it's all in the cloud, right? So you don't have to worry about load generators and, and, and the controllers. We take care of those things behind the scenes. So it is massively scalable. Um, now, the cool thing is that you're not limited to just cloud generators. Let's say there is the need to have some of that traffic originating from within the confines of your organization. You can certainly do that. So you can drive traffic from on-premise and also from the cloud as well. The other thing, too, is that this really makes it a truly human, readable, or consumable platform, as, as you're going to see shortly. So, you know, you can run these tests. You can massively scale from one to a million or five million virtual users. Um, you know, we scale automatically so that you don't have to start provisioning things and hoping that you have that we have load generators. No, we will have load generators because we're hosted on a cloud platform. Um, the reporting is also uh, something that becomes very clear. And the ability to create these tests is a non-technical exercise. So, for example, I'm, I'm going to talk about this for a few seconds, but here's an example of how we distribute the load across multiple load generators. You'll notice there is no technical name here for these load generators. You don't see LG001XYZ. What you see is a geolocation. You see Canada, you see Mumbai, you see Seoul, you see Frankfurt, you see Virginia. These are locations. Now, of course, behind the scenes, there's load generators. There's you know the things that you would expect to see, but these are not things that you must deal with and hope that we have a load generator sitting around somewhere uh, in order to drive traffic, right? These are based by geolocation. So complexity is not, a, is not a problem. Also, it's something that you can run tests either scheduled or ad hoc. Now think of the impact of this. In a very fast moving project, agile, DevOps teams, these are things that need to happen now, immediately. Your developers, or as I commonly call them, dev testers, need to kick off a test. Right now, traditionally, you know, on-premise solutions, right? You might have to make a call, a couple of phone calls, put in a request. You, you need you need X number of machines. You need uh, this generator. You need a controller, and so on. Right? That disappears, right? Because we can run an ad hoc test, and we will provision the necessary machines behind the scenes in order for you to run the test. Right? So you're not it, it, the machines, the infrastructure, the platform does not become a bottleneck. Right, so that that's very important for this, and the analysis. That's a huge part of this. The analysis, again, centralized. Everybody has access to these things, right? These are reports and dashboards that really point to where the issues are. You see that shaded uh, area here? That is an anomaly. So let me go back to 2000, roughly, right? When we ran a performance test, you saw a transaction take 30 seconds. Well, where did it spend those 30 seconds? Was it the database? Was it the application server? We don't know. We have to call all these different teams. We have to get these graphs. We have to start doing correlation and hope that you know we kind of see where we need to start looking at logs and other things. A very complex endeavor. No longer the case here, right? This anomaly basically says this is where the test started going south. Where the wheels started falling off the wagon, we can go through, through a lot of uh, a, a lot of ways of, of saying that. Uh, but essentially, it's where things started going bad for the application on the test. That combined with your monitors will point you to exactly at one point, what transaction, and what area you're going to focus on. And then finally, you know, this is you know in in, in the world of load runner cloud. A lot of the technologies that we've spoken about already apply here as well, right? So you can see that we have integrations with Azure uh, DevOps. We have integrations with Jenkins and, and JMeter and other technologies. So quite a bit of, of extensive integration. In fact, you know, we could say that Load Runner really provides the maximum flexibility with the most protocol support, the most application support, and the best integration in the market today, right? Because we, we become part of your, your ecosystem. And then Load Runner Developer, which we're going to start with when we talk about, when we go into our demo for a few minutes, um, is really something that is a game changer. Performance engineers, right? Traditionally, they might work with a proprietary solution to capture a script or record a transaction that becomes a user that you then uh, make it a part of a scenario, and it's you know you, you multiply that 500, 1,000 virtual users hitting your application. The problem with that is that developers who are now tasked with 
unit testing and some, some degree of performance testing really have their own tool space, right? They have their IDEs, they have their languages, JavaScript or Java or, or, or Python or some other, some other language, right? So those are the things that they, the world they live in, those are the things they prefer to use. So Load Runner Developer gives developers the ability to create a virtual user or a script for performance testing using their IDE of choice. Okay, so they can use something like Visual Studio Code, they can use um, uh, IntelliJ and so on, right? They're not limited by those things and it can work in JavaScript. Ultimately, the benefit is that now you're covering the entire uh, ecosystem, right? From the left all the way to the right. On the right-hand side are your uh, on the left-hand side, right, rather, your performance engineers or your dev testers that need to work with these tools, and there's also your performance engineers. But ultimately, they're speaking different languages, but they're addressing the same needs for testing the application from a performance perspective. Okay, and then this is some of the technologies um, that are available today. I certainly encourage you to look at Load Runner Developer, and let's go to a demo. I'm going to switch to a demo and talk about some of the things that you've been seeing. So this is Load Runner Developer. You'll notice that it's a very developer specific solution, right? But here's the cool thing, right? Let's talk about scalability. Let's talk about where the story starts. This is a test. This is a performance test. This is, or a script, I should say, right? Written in, in JavaScript. Now this script, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. I'm using Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to run this as a virtual user. This is a single user running locally on my machine. Now, that's great, right? You see a couple of past transactions and so on. But the cool thing is Load Runner Developer lets me then run this as a performance test locally on my machine. So I'm going to go ahead and just click Run Load. And this is going to run up to 50 virtual users. Right now, here's the great part about this. It's not consuming any load runner resources, right? So I'm not hitting load runner cloud or load runner enterprise. I am strictly working locally on my machine. Why do we want to do this? Well, typically this might be because I don't want to consume the more expensive resources, especially if I'm debugging. And I also do not want to, uh, you know, use up resources that should be available to other to other parts of the organization, or other um, developers. So this is all running locally. This is an API test, by the way. So I can use either web or I can use API uh, to run this. Now, what's also cool about this is that I can integrate with something like Grafana and InfluxDB. These are open source, these are free, right? So still working locally, I'm able to look at my transaction response time. So I have a couple of transactions, get categories, laptop categories, parse data, data connection, and so on. And I can see the patterns. Right? I can go back in an hour and say, you know, say, okay, what is the pattern here for performance? What are the, you know, any, any transaction um, drop rates and so on and so forth. Now, after this, then we can start talking about uploading this to the larger platform. And again, flexibility and scalability, right? Flexibility because now we've given the developers the option to become part of the equation and then we're, we have enough flexibility that we can take this same asset and now move it up to the larger platform, and that is Load Runner Cloud. Now, in Load Runner Cloud, speaking of flexibility, right, I'm going to go into a scenario, and we have a couple of scripts. You'll notice that this says JMeter up there, right? That's because these are JMeter scripts, um, and I can change the number of virtual users. But here's the most important thing out of this is my geolocations. Load Runner Cloud gives you the ability uh, to really use human readable uh, items, right? So instead of seeing a series of load generators, I know that there are load generators behind the scenes, but I really don't want to deal with a machine named LGX001. I want to deal with a location. So I'm going to say I'm going to run some of these from Ohio. I'm going to run some of these from, from uh, Central Canada. And now I can distribute these and say, I'm going to run 50% rather from Ohio, 30%, and then 20% from Virginia, okay? Simple as that. So you notice that it's a more uh, human consumable uh, option. Also have the option of using on-premise load generators. So maybe there is some traffic that I really want to see from a specific location. Now, when I say on-premise, um, that means that it could be a load generator in your own private cloud, maybe an AWS account or something that you own and then I specify the load generator, and then I can specify which script, what group is going to run from this. 
So notice the amount of you know technical detail, right? I am not, I'm, I'm certainly not um, uh, programming anything or configuring configuring JSON files. These are all simple drag and drop and click exercises. Then ultimately, once we run this, we get our results. And this is one of the most powerful reports. I always like to end demos on these reports because the result of all this scalability and flexibility, right? Regardless of the complexity behind the scenes that you never see, it really does boil down to very simple conversation when interpreting results. Game changer from the early days, right? We're not gonna look at logs, we're gonna look at a transaction. So shopping for tablets, for example, is a business transaction. And I got a report card that basically says, hey, Mr. User, you know what? You failed, you got an F. Why? Because, well, my images are rather large. Now we're gonna drill down through this in very simple human terms. And we get to our main screen and it literally tells us use a CDN because you're basically serving these images up from one single location. What resource is that? Well, it doesn't get any clearer than that. It shows you the actual image. So that is the power of a platform like this. So, you know, Right now, this is something that is available today. Take advantage of it, right? And speaking of, you know, some of the options, right? You saw how the developers can address, you know, we can address the needs of the developer as far as protocols. Um, I want to turn it over now to Mike Willett, who's going to walk us through a, a, um, some, some of his experiences, right? And I think it's important because, um, you know, who better to actually talk about some of these things than somebody who's really had experience in delivering these? So, Mike, over to you. Thank you. Oh, let me share my screen. Okay, what is it? No, here we go. All right, sorry. Uh, my name is Mike Willett. I'm an associate at Olenek. I've been at Olenek for 11 years, which is a consulting company. Although I've been consulting overall for 16 years, I've specialized in performance testing with various tools over 20 years. And I'm Mike, using I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. We're not seeing your screen. Uh, do you want me? I can send it over again. Let me try that again. Sorry, can you? Can everyone see it now? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And Sorry. if you can just go into slideshow mode. How's that? Yeah, we're seeing both monitors, like your next slide. Are you? I Sorry. shared the window. Yeah. Um, well, go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead. Right, or here, let that. me take it back really quick. Let me take it back really quick and just share the clean screen version of the screen you want to present. Here, give me one second. Okay, it's back at you. All right. So I'm just sharing the window. Perfect. Yep. And now in slideshow mode, and we'll be good to go. Sorry about okay. that, everyone. Thanks. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So I want to cover the load, the benefits of Load Runner. This is definitely not an all-inclusive list, but these are some of the uh, high points that I wanted to mention in this presentation. First is the uh, True Client Protocol, which was spoken about before. There's the enterprise integrations, uh, what I would call small features that have a high value, especially for someone that's using multiple tools. And of course, why use Load Runner? Okay, the first thing is for I want to talk about is True Client. Recently, I used True Client uh, for a project at a large energy company. The need was to performance test a Salesforce application. The challenge was a very tight schedule and limited available infrastructure to run the tests. True Client can easily handle a complex application like Salesforce. The benefit is significant reduction in scripting time compared to the traditional web, HTTP, HTML protocol. 
it's still not a record and playback because you have to deal with object recognition and weights in order to have a very reliable script that you can run in the test. However, the drawback of using the true client is very high levels of resources to run the number of concurrent users that you need for your test. The solution that I use at the client is I ran true client over the cloud. At that time, it was called Storm Runner. Now it's called Load Runner Cloud. But that way, I had the best of both worlds. I was able to meet the project in the time frame that was needed. I scripted with true client, and I was able to play back the test using the resources of the cloud, therefore not having the issues of getting the infrastructure set up at the client. True client can also be used for what I would refer to as hybrid testing. In hybrid testing, you may generate 95% of your load the traditional way, web HTTP, HTML, so you can put a lot of load in the system, but then you have a few true client users so you can measure the end user response time during the test. The next thing I want to mention is the enterprise integrations that uh, LoadRunner offers. I've used SiteScope at a large banking client. SiteScope is great as far as the company will set up all of their servers within SiteScope, so it's very easy to add them as part of what's being monitored during the test. The other benefit is reusability of your scripts. You've developed these great scripts due to performance testing. Why not take a scaled down version of that test that's doing maybe just read only activity, but run it in production and get your production uh, monitoring for how performance is in, is in the real world. I've also used ALM, Application Lifecycle Management, at large banking and energy clients. ALM is great because it's a centralized storage for all of the artifacts for the entire testing process from the use cases all the way to the scripts to the results i mean every, everything is in one place which is great for a large organization so everyone has access to stuff the next thing is what used to be called performance center now it's load runner enterprise i've used that at energy and insurance clients at a very simplistic level you could say Load Runner Enterprise is basically running the traditional load runner over the web. And the significant benefit of that is instead of every area having to have their own load runner infrastructure, you have the main large infrastructure that's easily shared between all of your teams across the corporation. Now, what I mentioned as small features at a high value. And I'm saying this based upon the fact that I use multiple tools and what I see as a large benefit in LoadRunner. LoadRunner used to be just left bracket, right bracket for correlations to handle dynamic data. However, starting with, I believe it was version 12, LoadRunner supports regular expressions, which is great because other tools support that and regular expressions are tremendously more powerful to be able to find out, find exactly what content you're looking for in your correlation. Report templates, that is a great feature. When I was working at clients, I was able to create a customized template to generate reports exactly what they wanted to see with their headers and all their information. So it was a great way to automatically generate a report as soon as the test had completed. Also a big feature in my mind for LoadRunner is how it handles parameters. Specifically for your data files, you can have use once or random. Therefore, you can easily use the data as you need it. Um, other tools, unfortunately, don't do that or it's more difficult to do that. Another big feature that I would say is pacing. Pacing is the perfect way so that you can configure your users so your users will generate the correct load however many times they're supposed to run per hour regardless of how slow or how fast things actually occur 
So your tests are consistently generating the same type of load, so there, which is what you want to have for comparisons. And the last thing, what I don't think a lot of people use for Load Runner, the standard uh, load generators are on the Windows platform, which is great, but you can also have the uh, load generators on the Linux platform. Granted, it's not all protocols. You can't do the GUI type protocols like True Client, but if you're doing web, HTTP, HTML, Linux is for the most part a more stable platform and you can probably get more users that are running. I, this is a question I get all the time as far as whether or not to use Load Runner. Because of the fact that I'm a consultant, when I first started a client, I'm going to do a proof of concept. That's done if there is no existing tool in place or if the existing tool that they have simply doesn't meet whatever the needs they have for the project. When doing the proof of concept, I'm going to look at the functionality supported by the tool. Can it handle the application that's needed for the project? The frequency of testing. Is this a one-off, very small project, or is this going to be done consistently going forward? Also, there is the client deliverables. Some tools, the deliverables, as far as the final scripts or the tests, is not easily run by the client if that's desired. Uh, Load Runner has the best interface and is the easiest product to use for people that are not I've been using performance testing for a long time. And of course, nowadays, cost is a big concern, but cost is not the only concern because you can't go with something that's cheaper if it doesn't do what you need. As I mentioned, Load Runner is the easiest for non-performance testers to use. So at the end of the project, when I am transitioning the work that I've done so that the client can continue to use it, if it's load runner, it is definitely easier for the client to run the tests and use what was produced. Compared to other tools, load runner, when you're running the test, has significantly better debugging as far as what's going on to drill into exactly what the problem is, as well as after the fact, the reporting capabilities. Not simply the reporting template, but what you can put in the report is significantly greater. And to be honest, I haven't found anything yet that Load Runner cannot handle because of the significantly wide protocol support or what Load Runner can handle. Uh, to be honest, the drawback for Load Runner is you cannot always justify the cost based on the client's project need, which is why we do the proof of concept to determine what is the best tool to get the job done. People ask, why not just use JMeter and BlazeMeter? Yes, that could be done. Um, it doesn't support everything. And uh, it's the interface or the functionality is not as nice as a full commercial tool like Load Runner. So now I'd like to have it open for any uh, Q&A, any questions that people have. Thanks, Mike, very much. Yes, we, we actually do have several questions, so appreciate you sharing with us today. Um, so let's get to the first one. I think this is uh, either of you possibly, but what is the level of integration between Load Runner Cloud and Splunk? So for instance, will data streaming capable, capability be added um, to Splunk as well? And maybe maybe Julio or both of you can comment on that. Yeah, so, so the, um, today the, the integration with uh, Splunk is at the script level. So basically errors, uh, any script errors that, that, are, that occur uh, can be sent out to, um, to Splunk. Okay, perfect. And what about, uh, here's a general, how do I reduce complexity in managing my load runner environment? You know, maybe both of you can share your thoughts on that. If you're in general, if you're talking about reducing the complexity, 
you could say if you go with a product, if you go with the cloud product, you still have to develop the script. You're doing the exact same work with the script, but you don't have to gather all the servers and set them up to use it. I'm not too sure if that answers the question or. Yeah, but just to add to that, I mean, it, it, it also, we want to take you out of the business of managing infrastructure and, and machines, right? So, so really concentrating more on the task at hand, which is the performance testing of the application as opposed to managing your platform. So as, as Mike said, you know, Load Runner Cloud, for example, everything is managed by, by a micro focus site. Okay, and here's another one that's probably not just this person, but this is probably real world for a lot of you, but how will Load Runner products help me with the challenges for legacy applications? Yep. So, yep, let me go and take a stab at that. So, so basically, we support things like terminal emulation, right? So, if you have a 5250 or a 3270 um, application, right, you know, green screen, uh, terminal emulation application with a mainframe in the back room, uh, certainly we can address that, right? So, we, that becomes part of the, you know, one, one of the legacy applications that we support, that we're going to support. Um, I would just add to that when it comes to legacy support. If you have any application, it's happened before, have an application that Load Runner could not directly support, you can always do it through remote access, and then you can do absolutely anything. Okay, good point, good point. Um, uh, just a reminder, too, we do have several still to get to, but if you have some questions, type them in. You'll also have the opportunity to follow up directly with the speakers. But for the Grafana integration, is the dashboard public or user credentials are required to view the raw data? So in the, in the Grafana integration, publicly, well, if I, if I understand the question correctly, the, the um, all the pieces that are required are available in the MicroFocus Marketplace, right? So your dashboard, is something that's freely available, downloadable, uh, you know, predefined dashboard, and you can then modify it to, to your own um, requirements. InfluxDB itself is also open source that can be downloaded, uh, doesn't require any, any sort of payment. Uh, Grafana also, which is the, so just to, to set the, the stage, right? Grafana is the graphics or the graphing engine, and then InfluxDB is the time series database. Those two are available, um, uh, freely available from, from the internet. Now, as far as credentials and things of that sort, it's really up to you, right? You can you can have these open uh, because you're just collecting metric data. So we're not pushing any any uh, proprietary data to to these uh, systems, right? So you're gonna get metric data, or you can lock them down with your own credentials as well. Hopefully, um, I guess what I would add, um, to be honest, with other tools, I've used InfluxDB and Grafana to be able to customize or have a dashboard. I have yet to see the need to do that with Load Runner because the default controller slash dashboard really has everything you need. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you, Mike. Uh, okay, I think we have time for maybe just one more. Um, how do you, um, let's see, hold on, sorry. Where do you get more information on DevWeb? We want to have a proof of concept. How do we start this? Yep. So Load Runner developers uh, available if you go to the MicroFocus uh, marketplace. Again, freely available. Doesn't require any um, any sort of payment, and you know, and that's for you know for developing the scripts right uh, locally. So that's going to be using your your machine locally, um, and it's not doesn't time out or anything, right? So it's not a, an evaluation. It's an actually working uh, environment. Um, so that's in, in a MicroFocus marketplace that you can download that. Okay, okay. Um, we do wanna just do a couple wrap up slides. So uh, if there's any other questions, we'll, we'll get to those offline. And if you can, Mike, go ahead and just advance, we'll get this wrapped up and stay till the end though here because we have a great tip for you at the end. Um, it, yeah, if you wanna share just the virtual community days of Vivid, just kind of a reminder in case you weren't on our event live, um, that in December we had a virtual community days around agile DevOps and testing. 
And if you go to the Vivid website, you can view the on-demand recordings today. So go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, another upcoming major event, if you haven't already, please register for Universe 2021 with Microfocus. Um, the dates are March 23rd and 24th. And you're going to actually be able to, you know, pick uh, three regional agendas. So you can pick the, you know, time zone that works best for you. So that's kind of a new addition, and we're excited about that. And lastly, uh, before you go, I did want to remind you the event, the event has been recorded. The link will be sent to you. Uh, but also, please take a moment at the end. A survey is going to pop up as you exit. And we'd love to get your information. In fact, anyone that completes that survey uh, completely, basically, will receive a complimentary dining card from Microfocus. It's applicable to US and Canada attendees only. Uh, it does exclude Microfocus employees and affiliates. But we'd really welcome your feedback. And again, for more information, you can reach out to Julio and Mike directly. Uh, you'll have their emails in a follow-up uh, email with the link to the recording. Okay, so anything else you guys want to add? We really appreciate everyone joining today. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.